Welcome back to another episode of Skincare Nerds. I'm Joanna, and today we're gonna to be talking about beginner skincare routines. So if you've just started out with your skincare and you're really not sure where to begin, keep watching, because I'm gonna be covering the three products that you absolutely need to have in your routine to start with, and how to add all the other goodies into your routine as you go. So what I wanna start with is that skincare doesn't have to be as complicated as you think it does. It really isn't that hard to wrap your head around if you keep things simple. So don't feel like you need to have a super complex routine to start with you really only need three core products just to begin with and then you can work out what to add into your routine after you've established those products you've got them down pat you know they work for your skin then you can start to add in things like serums and exfoliants we'll get to that part the other thing i really want to touch on is choosing your skincare if you're not going to a dermal clinician or a skin therapist to have your routine prescribed to you make sure you're choosing products that are designed for your skin type and that are going to target your concerns. There is nothing worse than buying all of this skincare that an influencer is using or that your mum's using or your sister's using or your friend's using. Their skin is not the same as yours and their concerns are not the same as yours. I like to put it this way, you wouldn't buy a pair of jeans based on your friend wearing them and going, oh yeah, she looks really good in those jeans. And then you go and buy the same style in the same size, except you're two sizes smaller and you're a foot taller than her. Those jeans aren't going to look the same. If we buy our clothing based on our own body shape and our own size, why don't we do the same with skincare? You need to make sure that those products are suitable for your skin type and your concerns. Trust me, you will save a load of money. So we've got four main skin types. So that's your dry skin, normal skin, oily skin, and combination skin. Sometimes sensitive skin can also fall under a skin type rather than a concern. But let's just talk about those four skin types to make it a little bit more simplified. Your normal skin, in I mean, that's the best skin type that you can have because normal skin really doesn't have many concerns associated with it. It doesn't overproduce or underproduce oil. Texture is usually quite refined and tone is quite even. Then we have your dry skin type, which infers a lack of oil in the skin. So a dry skin type is generally flaky or tight or dull, and you might experience a lot of texture in the skin. So you'll find that your makeup doesn't go on very smoothly. And also due to that lack of oil production, you'll find that pores are a lot harder to see in dry skin types. Now to our oily skin. Don't hate on oily skin, it actually ages better. But the thing with oily skin is that it is hard to keep things like makeup staying put because there is an overproduction of oil there. So if you find that throughout the day, you're oily all over, then you're probably an oily skin type. If you find you're just oily through the T-zone, then you might be more of a combo skin type. So that would be where you get oily through the T-zone and then you're drier more on the perimeters of your face. So an oily skin type may be more prone to things like congestion, you know, like blackheads and things like that. And also don't be fooled, oily skin can be dehydrated as well. So do not skip the moisturizer if you've got oily skin. And then your combo skins, as I mentioned, that's when you're a little bit drier around the perimeters of the face and you're oily through the T-zone. So you'll probably use a mixture of products that are suitable for both oily and normal skin types. I hope that kind of covers off the basics. I do recommend going to see a skin therapist or a dermal clinician at some point in your life, especially if you're really confused about what your skin type and concerns are. Now on to concerns. Once we've identified the skin type, so for example, you might have oily skin, then your concerns that are associated with the oily skin might be congestion. So that's how you wanna choose your products. They need to be suited to an oily skin type and they need to target the concerns that you have. Other concerns might be pigmentation, unevenness, textural issues, aging concerns. So the list is quite long, but you basically want to identify what your main concerns are. What are those things that you wanna treat with your skincare or improve with your skincare? As long as your products suit your skin type and they're designed to target your concerns, you're on the right path. Now, what are those three products I've been raving about this whole time? They are a cleanser, a moisturizer and an SPF. A well-rounded routine really doesn't exist without those three products, effectively cleansing away impurities, preventing dehydration and protecting the skin from the sun are absolutely non-negotiables. First things first, your cleanser. How do you choose the right cleanser? So one of my favorite cleansers is the ASOP Gentle Cleansing Gel. I have been using that since, oh, 2012. So the reason I cleanse with that one is because it is a gentle daily cleanser, but I do recommend always having something gentle that you can use daily in your routine, especially if you're not wanting to have more than one cleanser. I like to have 
two or three, but that's just me being extra. I like to have an oil cleanser that can break down makeup on the surface of the skin before I go in with my gentle daily cleanser. Or if I haven't really been wearing makeup and I just wanna do a double cleanse with like an active cleanser, which would be the Dermalist one, I would cleanse with the ASAP Gentle Cleansing Gel and then I'd go in with the Dermalist one after that. So you can choose your cleanser based on your skin type. So your cream cleansers are generally more suitable for drier skin types. The oil cleansers are pretty much suitable for anyone. They're really good for removing makeup. Your gel cleansers are usually for more normal to oily skin types. Then you've got things like foaming cleansers or clay cleansers and they may be more suited to combo to oily skin types as they can be a bit more drying on the skin. And then we've got things like micellar water. Now I'm not against micellar water, but that is not a standalone cleanser. That is a makeup remover in my eyes. Great to use in the morning just to take off that excess skincare from the night before. But if you're using that as your only cleanser, you need to get a proper one. Some of my favorite cleansers are, in the oil category, I love the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. And I also really like um, the Medicate Lipid Balancing Oil, I think it's called. I'm currently using the Alabache Botanical Cleansing Oil. As for cream cleansers, which are really more suited to your dry to sensitive skin types, I really love La Roche-Posay's Telerion Dermo Cleanser. And Avene also have a cleansing milk, which is really nice for sensitive skin types too. Then your gel cleansers, obviously the ASAP Gentle Cleansing Gel and Dermalogica's Special Cleansing Gel. And then foaming cleansers, I don't recommend all that much because you usually find quite stripping ingredients in foaming cleansers, but there are a couple of really good ones on the market, like the Cosmetic Salicylic Acid one, especially if you're acne prone or oilier and you're prone to congestion. And then on the clay cleanser, Sadashi have a clay cleanser, which is suitable for most skin Skin types. And of course, if we're going to mention micellar water, the Bioderma one is really the only one I use. So just to wrap up on choosing a cleanser, I do recommend having two cleansers, but if you can only have one, choose a cleanser that's suitable to use daily. ASAP, Dermalogica, Skin Institute, they all have good daily cleansers that you can use without stripping your skin, but still giving an effective cleanse. If you're someone that wears makeup a lot, um, I would suggest having an oil cleanser and then a gentle daily cleanser. And if you're someone that um, deals with a lot of texture and congestion, then I'd suggest having a basic everyday cleanser plus something that's a little bit more active like the Dermalist, something that's gonna help to give you that chemical exfoliating action while you're cleansing your skin. Now let's get into moisturizers. Nobody is exempt from having a moisturizer. I'm only gonna say that once. Yes, I'm talking to you oily skin types because I know you'll try and get out of it, but everyone needs a moisturizer. If you're using your serums and all of your actives, you need something that's gonna lock that in and provide hydration and keep the skin moisturized and soft. So for very, very dry skin, I like to recommend Walita Skin Food. It's a beautiful, really rich moisturizing cream. It can be used for cracked heels, hands, the face. Also Aspects SMC, their super moisturizing complex and the Avene um, Restorative Skin Cream. So that's really beautiful for more sensitive skin types. If you tend to react to a lot of products, that is a good option. And La Roche-Posay have some good options as well, but that's my picks for very dry skin. Then to normal to dry, which is me. So I like to use Aspects Phytostat 9, love that. It will always be one of my holy grails, but I also really like the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream and I like It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream as well. I think I actually have that here. I love to use this under makeup, so that's one of my go-tos. Then for combination skin, you can kind of go between what you would use for a normal skin type and an oily skin type. So Phytostat 9, I find is suited to uh, combination skin types. And also the Ordinary's Natural Moisturizing Factors is a good one too. Then for oily skin types, and I know that you've been waiting for this, the Murad Nutrient Charge Water Gel. Oh my God, amazing. It's such a good moisturizer for oily skin. But even if you've got normal skin, so I actually own it, but I use it quite regularly. Aspect Sheer Hydration is also a really good one and Cosmetics Shineless too. Then for sensitive skin, I do recommend La Roche-Posay and Avene for all things sensitive skin. The French really do sensitive skin products really well. So anything in the Telerion range, Oh, so good. Now our last product on the list is SPF. There's no reason why you shouldn't be wearing an SPF every day. It really is crucial, especially if you're spending so much money on active skincare ingredients like retinols, and then you're going out into the sun and you're just causing more damage. You need to have an SPF. A lot of people wanna know what the differences are between chemical and physical sunscreens. So chemical sunscreens, as the name suggests, 
feature chemical filters, whereas your physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens contain ingredients like titanium dioxide and zinc oxide to form more of a physical protective barrier on the skin. So some of my recommendations for physical sunscreens include Dermalogica's Invisible Physical Defense, Medicaid's Physical Sunscreen, and Ultraviolet Lean Screen. Now you should always expect a physical sunscreen to be a bit thicker on the skin. Chemical sunscreens tend to be a bit more pleasant to wear daily, but a lot of people that react to chemical sunscreens sunscreens will use a physical. So there still are really, really good physical sunscreens on the market, but chemical sunscreens tend to be the preference because they are a little bit more comfortable to wear on the skin. So some of my recommended chemical sunscreens are Meso Aesthetics Light Water Anti-Aging Veil, Alpha H's Protection Plus SPF 50, and Ultraviolet Supreme Screen. Now sunscreen is a little bit harder to choose based on your skin type and concerns. If you are a little bit more sensitive and you've reacted before to chemical sunscreens, I'd suggest opting for a physical sunscreen. If you haven't had any issues with sunscreen in the past, maybe try a chemical one. With sunscreens, I think it's best to read a few reviews before you make a purchase, just to see what other people are saying about the product. You know, they might have the same skin type as you or they might have the same concerns as you. Reading the product description to see if it's suitable for you and reading reviews can really help in choosing the right sunscreen. When it comes to your SPF, don't forget that's your last skincare step. And when it comes to layering in general, don't forget the rule thinnest to thickest in consistency. So that should help you to identify where things sit in your routine. Then when it comes to serums, you wanna make sure you're layering based on your concerns. That's the way I like to put it. So for example, if you're trying to target pigmentation or prevent future damage, you want to be putting your vitamin C down first. And then if you're also using an niacinamide or a HA in the morning as well, you put that over the top and then your SPF. So I hope that kind of explains layering in very, very simple terms. Sometimes that does require a bit of trial and error again, because some products just do not play nicely together. So always have a play around with your products and see what works. As a general rule, your vitamin Cs, niacinamides and HAs can be used in the morning with your SPF and then any acids like your retinols, your AHAs, your BHAs should be at night. But your HAs and your niacinamide can be used at both times. I hope that makes it simple. I'm making skincare sound complicated, aren't I? Now let's talk about the additional things that can go into your routine once you've established those three products. So you can add in your serums and then you've got things like exfoliants, toners, masks, devices, the list goes on. So as we've discussed, you need to be picking your serums based on your skin type and your skin concerns. Make sure you do your own research on that product and what it does. And also be careful not to double up on ingredients either. I've come across a lot of people that are using both the ASAP Super B Complex and the Aspect Extreme B. You don't need both of those serums. They're both B serums. It's not gonna hurt to have both of them, but it's not necessary to have both. So you don't need to be spending that money on two of those products. So that's where it comes in handy to know a little bit more about ingredients. And the podcast is a great place to learn more about ingredients. So if you haven't listened to Beauty IQ Uncensored, I would recommend heading there because it does explain a lot about serums and different ingredients and what you should and shouldn't have in your routine. But for example, your products like niacinamide and hyaluronic acid are pretty universal and most skin types can use them. Whereas products like retinol, you might only want to be using if you have congestion concerns or aging concerns or pigmentation concerns. If you've got very normal skin with minimal concerns, you might not want to introduce a retinol until you reach 30, for example. Whereas acids like AHAs can be really beneficial, and we've actually done a video on AHAs, so go and watch that. They can be really beneficial in reducing texture and encouraging collagen production. So ingredients like that are great to have in you know, chemical exfoliant tone and products like that. They even come in serums, you know, you name it. But when it comes to choosing your serums, you do not need 10 serums. You might need four. So if you have two for your morning, so you've got a vitamin C in the morning and a HA to layer over that, and then you've got a niacinamide and a BHA for the night. Do your research on those products, find out what's in them, find out what concerns those ingredients target, and then you can decide whether they belong in your routine. So I hope that kind of explains how to incorporate serums. And then we come to things like exfoliants. I really like to recommend an exfoliant in a skincare routine because it does help with texture. I don't necessarily recommend physical scrubs. They're just not for me personally. I really like to recommend chemical exfoliants. We've done an episode on chemical exfoliants before, so you can go and find out more about them there. Things like masks and devices, they're just not necessary at this point. 
let's get your skincare, your basic skincare routine down pat before you start adding in all of these different things that you see on Instagram and TikTok. Let's just keep it simple to start with. See how your skin responds, see if it improves your concerns, and then you can start to add in more things from there. But honestly, you don't need more than probably six products in your skincare routine. I'd say six products and you've pretty much got something that's quite well-rounded. You can also add in things like eye treatments, which I think are a good addition if you're in your mid to late twenties. So I really hope that this video hasn't just been completely confusing. I always get to the end of recording and I'm like, did any of that actually make sense? I really hope that some of this has been helpful for you. There are a ton of other skincare nerds videos if you haven't seen them all already. I would recommend going to watch those because we cover a few ingredients in detail so that might help you choose your serums and if you still have any questions you can leave them in the comments box below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can but until next time make sure you subscribe hit the bell button so you don't miss a video from us and I'll see you soon